Hello, everybody, and welcome to the What Acker Saturday shortlist. It is the end of term. He's bought all his toys. He's bought, I don't know, board games, WWF wrestling ring to play with. But we have the serious business of picking out um, all of the best fixtures for the What Acker um, collection of bets. Are you looking forward to championship final day? League One playoffs have already started. Premier League still got three weeks to go. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Um, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? I saw one of your videos earlier this week, Benjamin, and you working out all the crazy permutations <laughs> that can happen as well, really. And that's despite the fact that the top two spots have already been taken. And the bottom three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we're into final day mode on the championship. So we're going to make one of our Ackers the focus there, and then we're going to go for the win Acker across the 3 p.m. So I will be live um, on the Benjamin Bloom football channel from midday following championship final day. But we'd love you to head over to whatacker.com prior to then, and you can follow on with the selections that we're going to be talking about today. And for absolutely free, sign up there with your email address uh, to get all our picks. Now, we love the end of the season. We love the final day. Matthew doesn't particularly love the way the odds all kind of drift because we're expecting minimum three goals per game in every game. But we're going BTTS all in on the championship. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's um, probably not the time to start looking at sort of form lines and who's going to win their game. Because <laughs> there's so much at stake, almost too much at stake for some teams. There's so little at stake for some of the other teams as well. So, so there's so Matthew, many... there's six, um, six games that affect the last two playoff places. And six complete dead rubbers. I'm interested to see yeah. where you've gone. Yeah. Before I begin, Benjamin, I'm going to ask you one question. If I was to give you a £100 free bet and you had to pick the team that was going to get promotion with Fulham and Bournemouth this season, and they might, you know, well, they're obviously going to do it through the playoffs, who would you choose? So the way you framed it, so I don't know who's going to be in fifth that's, and sixth. That's the thing. That's the thing. I do know who's going to be in third and fourth. So I probably, with your free bet that I have to spend now before the end of the season, I'll probably put it on Nottingham Forest um, yeah. in the way you framed that. But yeah. ask me on Saturday at 3 p.m. It'll be a different answer. Ask mm. me after playoff legs one, it'll be a different answer. Playoff leg two, it'll be a different leg. And probably, Matthew, at half time in the playoff final, it'll probably still be a different answer as well. Is that before Nathan Jones crowd surfs with all the looting fans <laughs> that they celebrate being in the Premier League? <laughs> that Nathan Jones in the playoff final could be an interesting one. Um, uh, right, so we're diving in. So it's a yeah. BTTS Acker, yeah. and this is all championship. So this is right up my street. Yes, exactly. Um, so all of these six games um, are odds on for both teams to score. We've just got to try and find three out of the six, starting with Huddersfield against Bristol City. Huddersfield are already certain of a playoff spot. Bristol City are, have nothing to play for, but they've scored eight goals in their past two matches. Um, they've only had two away clean sheets in 22 games this season, Bristol City. <laughs> um, the, the Terriers are likely to rest a few players. I don't think it would be a big surprise if there's, there's a much-changed lineup here. But they've, they've scored twice in, in the past five matches, and I think there'll certainly be an element of wanting to sort of keep some kind of flow going as well. So that's uh, pick number one. Yeah, do you want to roll on to pick number two? Yeah. I think you hit on the key issue that we know the EFL rules say you have to have 10, 10 outfield players in the squad from the previous game, but yeah. we're we're expecting possibly a few first team positions to have changed, yeah. aren't we? Some of those outfield players will probably be like wearing flip flops in the dugout or something, <laughs> yeah, just in right. a dressing gown or a toweling robe or something. Um, Hull against Nottingham Forest. Um, yeah, Hull City are a a very weird team to try and predict, but they had five shots on target at Ashton Gate despite losing that game 5-0, and they did previously spank Reading 3-0. Uh, Forest will not be at full strength after that energy-sapping defeat at Bournemouth. More to the point, they're in the playoffs already. So, um, again, this is a chance for second-string players to create chances and play, try and play themselves into contention for um, the, whoever they're going to be up against in the playoffs. It could be one of several teams. So, yeah, Hull versus Forest, another team... Um, involved here who are certain of a playoff spot um, against a team with very little to play for. So out of those first two, I, I think I like Huddersfield, Bristol City um, on the basis of what you said, that Carlos Corberon might just calm it down and give a few players a rest 
going into the last game. The chances of Huddersfield actually finishing third are probably fairly mm. slim as well with goal difference. So they've probably accepted fourth place and uh, they're going to go up against fifth. I'm a little bit worried that Forrest will keep a clean sheet against Hull in terms of BTTS. Yeah. But again, we just don't know what Steve Cooper's going to do in respect of... Yeah, in respects of resting players. He didn't rest too many with Swansea in a similar position last right. season. So, I think if Forrest are near full strength, um, I think they'd quite like a nice, solid win to, you know, bounce back before. But let's move to your next two, Matthew. Yeah, sure. Uh, over to Deepdale. Uh, Preston versus Middlesbrough. Preston have scored in five of the past six matches. Uh, they lost 4-1 to Blackburn before winning 3-1 at Barnsley. The handbrake seems to be off for Ryan Lowe's side, really. A bit sort of gung-ho finish to the season. Give the fans what they want. A bit of entertainment on the final game of the season. Uh, Middlesbrough need to win at Deepdale. And they've scored five in um, the past two matches as well. So um, we just see Preston with the handbrake off sort of going for goals. And Middlesbrough trying to sort of outscore their opponents. This could descend into a bit of a, a gunslinging um, contest. So that's the next pick. You, you, you're dead right. I've got a lot to say on that one. So move on to the move on to the next one, which I'm, I'm fascinated to see how you see this one playing out because you, you've yeah. got well, we've got Sheffield United and Fulham, and one of the championship's greatest ever goal scoring machines with absolutely nothing to play for, though. Yeah, I know it's 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 like weird, isn't it? I mean, I guess, I guess they're that they had that seven nil win over Luton, didn't they, as well? And um. I mean, yeah, Sheffield United are looking over their shoulder. Shoulder. I mean, Luton and Middlesbrough have got the potential to leapfrog them. Um, but they have. Mill Mil will do as well with a six-goal swing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I mean, the home side, they've scored 34 goals in 22 home games. They've found the net in the past four matches, including that 3-1 win at QPR. Fulham are champions. Um, but they'll be looking to sign off in style, I think, here. They've scored 106 goals on them <laughs> this season. It's just truly incredible. I know I know everyone gives it the big one about, oh, well, Fulham or the track ball losing the championship. But it's still a brilliant achievement, what Marco Silva's done. They're a team that everyone wants to try and beat. And um, there's no pressure on them now when they go to Bramall Lane. So I think, you know, it's it's unless they've really been um, sort of overdoing it on the party front, which they, they, <laughs> I don't think they have been then. Um, yeah, Blades Fulham. I, I just quite like the idea of this featuring a few goals, even if Sheffield United. I think Sheffield United might win it, but it could still be a high-scoring win. I think it's. I think it's a good one, Sheffield United Fulham, on the basis Sheffield United have a lot riding on them. Fulham will be chilled out, and I think they will probably score, won't they? So I like it. Um, in terms of Preston Middlesbrough, I think you hit on something really important that Middlesbrough. They need goals. A win here might not be enough. And I'm sure you're aware of the head-to-head -head scenario. So if mm. um, so, if Middlesbrough win by two goals and score two more... No, I don't know which way around. Score one more... No, two more, I think, than Sheffield United do. We're at complete deadlock if Sheffield United draw. So they're literally going to... So it could be so tight. And maybe Chris Wilder's instructions will be, look... What one nil here might not do attack 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 attack. So yeah. um, I quite I quite like both of them actually. We'll, we'll narrow this down, but you have got two more first. Yeah, um, Stoke versus Coventry. Um, yeah, thirteenth versus eleventh at the Bet Three Six Five Stadium. Big crowd expected for this game. Lots of away fans. Uh, Cov actually had uh, nine shots on target despite a recent two one home defeat against Huddersfield. They're certainly uh, creating chances. Stoke have scored in 10 of the past 11 games. Really just a, a stat-based pick, this one. Um, final one, um, which I like better than maybe all of them, is uh, Swansea QPR. It's been both teams to score, yes, in the past six Swansea matches. They had a 4-4 at Reading, a 3-3 against Bournemouth. QPR have got porous defence. They've only had two away clean sheets all season. Um, they found the net ranges in four of the past five matches. They're not full of goals, the hoops, but... Um, just think this is going to be one of those where Swansea could end up winning this game 5-2 or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm behind it. So I've got two small worries, um, but they're not they're not big worries. One is just with QPR, with Mark Warburton known to be going, whether just whether you just get a really flat, flat as a pancake yeah, performance um, and you know they lose 3-0 or something like that. And yeah. just the Stoke clean sheet with Michael O'Neill is is just a worry. So where are you um, in terms of these six then, Matthew? So I'm not going to hand it all over to you again, Benjamin. Um, OK, well... <laughs> well, well that would be a terrible idea, um, generally speaking. <laughs> I think um, 
I think Huddersfield versus Bristol City should go in. And um, and I like the idea of Sheffield United Fulham. I do. So let's put those in and then have a think about whether we go for Preston Middlesbrough or whether we go for Stoke Cobb or whether we go for Swansea QPR. And we'll look at the odds and um, maybe maybe we'll do... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe... I we'll think do... we need a dead rubber in there, Matthew. I think we... I don't think we should go for three games with something right. So maybe slide that Swansea QPR in or the Stoke Coventry. Yeah. Or we could just maybe put two trebles up with like three selections in each one and see whether or not which one the like the punters decide. High pressure, low pressure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, we I mean and then you could put them all together for like a big money accumulator. Yeah, well, you know, it's um everyone's gonna be wanting to cheer goals and it's just gonna be an exciting two hours from uh, lunchtime onwards, isn't it, really? There's so much at stake. So check out whatacker.com and we'll see what we come up with. We could go for the on the beach BTTS and the high pressure BTTS and you can check which one you like. Matthew will sort you out a little bit of a little bit of a tickle from one of our yeah. providers as well. You get a little bit of a bonus. Please gamble responsibly. BeGambleAware.org, 18 plus only. Only bet what you can afford. Um, should we move on to the 3 p.m.? Win Acker, you were struggling for value. You were saying before we um, were starting, particularly in the Premier League, Matthew. Yeah, I mean, a few weeks ago we were talking, weren't we? And we could have gone through like the the four different divisions and the, the betting coupon. Now we don't have a League One coupon anymore. The Champions. I was struggling for fixtures, not necessarily well, value. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it, really. So um, one pick from the Premier League st- stuck out really at the, at the odds. I think it's a great accumulator price. Crystal Palace to beat Watford. Um, you know, no prizes for predicting this outcome, but what for the teetering on the brink? The rele- relegation is going to happen. Um, but the final nail in the coffin was that 2 1 defeat against Burnley last weekend. And Palace are unbeaten in six at Salhurst Park. They spanked Everson in the FA Cup, beat Arsenal 3 0. They've, they've looked pretty sharp at home, really. I know they haven't got a great win rate under Patrick Vieira, but um, they won 2 1 at Southampton last weekend. And um, I think that Watford are going to go there knowing, you know, they get a goal down and can see heads dropping and Roy Hodgson just wearing his sunglasses in the sunshine <laughs> and um, <laughs> relaxing. He did, he did look, he looked pretty flash in those sunglasses, but yeah. Chill. Um, when your football team is losing home game after home game, anything you do will ire fans. And the Watford fans were not happy with these particular sunglasses, were they? But <laughs> no, I, I quite like that pick, um, Matthew, and I, I would quite like some Premier League representation on the show. Yes. This yes. week, so I'm quite high on that. Unless you're going to bowl me over with your um, with your League Two picks. Yeah, League Two. I'm going to give you four different League Two teams that I think could be a good bet. Um, it's the final game of the League Two season as well at um, three o'clock. So I've picked up mainly teams that have got something to play for, a bit of motivation there. Starting with Northampton away to Barrow. Um, Woof. Cobblers win and they get promoted. It's that simple. They've won three of their past four away matches and they've enjoyed a run of three wins before last weekend's draw against Exeter. They found a bit of form just at the right time. Barrow, not an easy place to go, a bit of a cliche, but they've, they've done quite well recently under Phil Brown. The season's starting to fizzle out a bit now after losing the past two games. Just think the motivation factor here of Northampton needing the win, Barrow not needing anything. Um, we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll play in for the cobblers at Barrow. Yeah, do you want to move on to the next one and then we'll do them yes. in groups of twos? Yeah, okay. Um, the next one is uh, Bradford City to beat Carlisle United at Valley Parade, a fantastic stadium as far as League Two is concerned. Uh, pulled off a surprise 4 1 win at Sutton last weekend, Mark Hughes' side. They absolutely battered Sutton in that game. That wasn't like a smash and grab or red card or anything. They had 11 shots on target against a team who were chasing promotion. Um, Charles Vernon was at the double and they're bidding for the third straight win to sign off the season. They're going to have a nice big crowd at Valley Parade. Want to get a bit of like, I was going to say momentum, but I don't think that exists, but confidence ahead of the the new season. Could be building something special. And Carlisle go there having lost three of their past four away games. They were beaten 3-0 at at lowly Harrogate last time out. And I just think Bradford will and um, you know we'll 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 play them off the park. That's that's what my contention there. How confident are you of Northampton dealing with the dealing with the pressure? Not huge, hugely confident. If I'm being totally honest, I think they're sort of um, you know Barrow are um, a bit of a sticky team to play against. They're kind of like away from home. 
you know what it's like away from home. The desperation to get a goal can sometimes override. You know, you stop playing your normal game. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can trust them. Okay, but they have looked better on the road recently. I think I'm going to need to hear all four then before we go all in on this one. Okay, next one's an interesting one insofar as that I'm tipping Mansfield to beat Forest Green, and partially because they're even money to do so, and I think that there's a greater than 50% chance that the Stags will win this game. Therefore, it smacks of value in my book. Um, Mansfield sit fifth in the League 2 table. They need a point to secure a playoff spot. Been strong at home all season with 15 wins in 22 games at Field Mill. They've just had back-to-back home wins over Crawley and Stevenage. Uh, Forest Green, obviously not a team that you'd want to oppose for the majority of this season, but they've been out of form for the past couple of months. In fact, in the last six matches, they've only won one, one of their games, and that was against old, uh, relegated Oldham. They feels recently... eerily similar to Sheffield United Fulham, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like, it's just, apart from that, Forest Green have, have fallen off a bit of a cliff, really. I mean, they're, they're not even going to win League Two. I think Exeter are going to win it. So um, they lost to Swindon and Harrogate recently. Um, so for me, Nigel Clough's side, just the, they're the ones with the, with the eyes on the prize here. Because I agree. They're in the playoffs, so they're, they're plugged in. And, and Walsall Swindon? Finally, yes. Swindon go to Walsall. Um, Swindon have been the best away team in League Two this season. They've scored 39 goals in their 22 away games and they've won four of their past five games. The playoff spot is theirs to lose. They're in seventh. Won't be easy, but um, and Walsall under Mike Flynn are a better prospect than they were under Matt Taylor earlier this season. But um, they've lost four of their past seven matches. Um, again, the motivation factor, it's a bit like... Um, Northampton going to Barrow, really, this one. But I think I probably believe in Swindon a little bit more. Just simply, they they just have that know-how away from home as well. But it all comes down to whether we'd go for, say, like a Palace, Bradford, Mansfield home treble, or whether we'd look to toss in a Northampton or a Swindon, knowing full well that away teams just carry that extra bit of jeopardy, don't they, Benjamin? They do. Um, I almost quite like Bradford and Carlisle just to calm everything down in the middle because there's nothing there's nothing yeah. hinging on it. Um, yeah. Uh, so we've got teams essentially in um, Mansfield, Swindon um, and, well, Northampton are going for automatic and Mansfield and Swindon are just trying to secure those playoffs. So there's pressure on a lot of those games. You didn't sell me massively with your confidence or lack of therein on Northampton dealing with the dealing with the press. You seem more confident of Swindon um, going to Walsall and winning. Is that fair? Yeah, because they've 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 had some really good wins recently. Swindon, like they beat Forest Green and they got a red card in that game and still won it as well. I just feel like they've got um, they they they've sort of got their act together at the right time. Swindon and all those away wins, having been the best away team in League Two, it just gives you that. That they they've picked up more points away than uh, than they have at the county ground, which which is which is rare. I mean, certainly for for most of the teams in League Two, where home advantage plays a part. So um, yeah, I think so. I think Swindon are a bigger price than uh, Northampton as well, like significantly bigger. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of edging towards Palace, Bradford, and Swindon, but we will make the final call um, prior to. Well, actually, we normally record on a Thursday. I'll, completely break the fourth wall here it's friday morning so um, we're going to get our skates on here and this will be yeah. um up and about and the website will be likely um updated with our final choice um probably in in a matter of hours matthew maybe minutes as soon as we finish <laughs> that we'll be getting on the site so it'll be on there by the time anybody watches this so yeah we'll, and, um, and then we'll matthew's get... off to hang out with the forest green squad down by the river and have eight pints yeah <laughs> Well, I don't live too far from Mansfield, so if I see them having a, a nice vegan vegan supper and a, a vegan, I forgot vegan about food. the vegan angle that we got a bash forest green with as well. Haven't no, we? no, no, no. I'm, I'm all in favour of the veganism. I think it's a great cause as well. So if I see them enjoying um, a lot of plant based wine um, <laughs> by the River Trent, then oh. um, I'll, I'll fill you in. <laughs> That's absolutely tremendous. Um, and well played Forest Green, and we're looking forward to seeing them in uh, League One next season. Uh, Matthew, absolutely brilliant stuff. Sorry, you got me You got me literally cackling. It's a good thing the baby's not napping uh, next door. So once again, check out whatacker.com. All the picks will be up there. I think you might get multiple ones this week. I think Matthew's feeling a bit cantankerous, and we might get a high-pressure BTTS, and on the beach, BTTS, we might get a home win. We might get an away 
win ACA. So there might be plenty of choice as ever. Please only bet what you can afford. 18 plus only. BeGambleAware.org. Please, Matthew, tell them, for God's sake, gamble responsibly if you're going to follow all of this stuff and you will get a little bonus um, through one or other of our providers over on What ACA um, with each of our tips. Um, what does the weekend look like for you, Matthew? The weekend looks nice and quiet, actually, because my wife's going away next week with her school on a PGL. So, oh, I'm, literally, so I'm literally making the most of like not being a single parent for the next <laughs> for the next two days. And then uh, and then next week, it's an absolute running the gauntlet, really. Stop walking it. the dog, feeding the rabbit. So how does your weekend look? So, yeah, we've got the Super Stream on um, Saturday and hopefully the championship final day. Last two seasons, it's been incredible. We've had two years ago, Forest overtaking Swansea in the last half hour. And last season, all the relegation places swapped within the last 15 minutes of the season. Everybody was safe. And then I'm at MK Wickham, one that you'll be taking an interest in on Sunday night. I'll be at that game and... Um, yeah, then I dare say we'll be doing lots of reviewing of the championship ahead of the lots of previewing we're doing uh, for the playoffs. So it never stops. Never stops. Never stops. I fancy MK to Everton Wickham. I'll throw that out. Really? Out. Yeah, Ooh. they're going to do it. That, gonna do that's going to be a big prize. They played so well in that first half hour against with the chair boys. I think they can do it. Interesting. Well, we, we'll have we'll have a look at that because that will be big, big. I might have a look at that as well if Matthew's tipping it. That will be big, big value. And um, thank you everybody for joining us. This has been a Saturday shortlist. Head over, head over to whatacker.com to see the final picks and join me tomorrow on the Saturday Super Stream for the final championship round at midday. See you next week. <laughs>